Uh, if you will turn to Isaiah chapter 53, but I want to read this in um, Psalms 127. 1, it says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it, and except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. And I say, uh, I say that because the Lord gives me that often that I can do nothing outside of him. And so, um, you know, I thank you for your prayers because he has... I was sharing with Brother Jamie last week. Uh, one of my concerns was always that the Lord is going to give someone else the scripture that he get in. And Brother Jamie uh, spoke out of Isaiah 53 last week, and yet the Lord had given me peace about that, and, and, and that he, you know, uh, you know, spoke to my heart, saying, you know, hey, if I give you something to say, you say it, and it doesn't matter if, if they have to hear it twice. It's okay, you know, and so that gave me a piece about it and uh, and everything. But also, it showed me too that the Lord's Scripture does not return void in that it's so vast in what what it can be used in um, and into bringing glory to His name and edification to the saints. And so I appreciate the prayers and because uh, uh, Scripture, uh, like I was sharing with some of the brothers, is it's like a puzzle sometimes. The Lord gives you all these scriptures, but now he's got to make it to be a picture that you can recognize and stuff and so uh and i and i'm thankful that i uh since that he has done that so hopefully it will edify and glorify edify you and glorify his name at the same time so isaiah 53 and we're just going to read the whole chapter because it's one of my favorite pas passages um it says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her, shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. If you ever get down and feel sorry for yourself, go back and read this scripture. I read it. I read it often, and and it really helps me. And um, it reminds me too of what when I was dead in trespasses and sin, I was the one who despised and rejected him. I was the one who made him a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And uh, you know, I'm the one who uh, I might as well have been the one who put the stripes on him and put the thorn on his on his head because uh, I didn't want anything to do with him. I didn't I didn't have no desire uh, for for Christ. You know, I. I I, I was in my, the way I was living, it was like, you know, I don't want this man to rule over me. You know, that's how I was acting. But, you know, God was merciful, and he loved me before I even knew what love was. And uh, Bobby asked me uh, 
the title of this, and uh, I'm not good at titles, but the Lord actually uh, gave me one, and it's, uh, you know, and, and Jesus prayed. And, uh, you know, when I when I get down, like I said, I, I, I remember this scripture, but the Lord also brought me to Luke 23, 34, and it says, you know, it says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when, when he brought that to my mind, he says, that was you I prayed for. That was you. That was you, David Ludek. You can get out on this if you want to, but I took that personally, and I and I thought, Lord, what a graciousness you were that that you know this is what I did to you, but yeah, you nailed on that cross. You asked you asked for forgiveness for me, you know, and that what what a blessing that was. And so then once redemption came in. And that was the comfort part of it. So then once redemption come in, then if you'll turn to 1 Corinthians 1. And I really do appreciate the prayers when, you know, when, when, when you brothers come forth and when we encourage one another. You really know that you can sense the Lord because the Lord starts putting things together. I mean, and it's just, it's like, wow, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, you know. And, and he just, he puts it all together. But he's going to do it at his timing. He's not going to do it ahead of time because he knows me that I'm going to think on it too much, you know, and try. So I'd rather just leave it with him and then let him do it and, and thank God he did. But in 1 Corinthians uh, one twenty six uh, through 29, it says, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confine the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, things which are despised, hath God chosen you, and things which are not to bring to not things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. He was despised. Guess what? I'm going to be. I'm going to be despised too. And uh, that's why I said when I get, start feeling the poor, pitiful me's, the Lord reminds me, you know, again, <laughs> You didn't go through, you're not going through nothing that I haven't already gone through. You know, in all points tempted, yet without sin. And that's what I ask the Lord to help me, that I don't sin when I'm going through those things too. And so, you know, in Acts 14:22, uh, and it says, And we must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. I like how um, the Lord has used our brothers to help us when we're reading the scriptures to to read each word you know and you know when I saw that this morning you know or the other day and we must so it, it's something that we will go through you know brother Jamie was talking last week about Benny Hinn what is whatever uh, you know staying in a twenty six thousand dollar a night room that's not a lot of tribulation right there you know that's somebody that's selfish that's someone that's you know not thinking of the poor who who the lord told us to uh, to take care of it's not thinking of others he's thinking of himself you know and uh and i don't mean um you know, I'm not trying to say that about people having money, that it's, it's wrong to have that. I'm just saying that, you know, we don't need to think it's strange when we're going through tough times. I mean, the Lord came to do the will of God. He, he came in, uh, to preach the word of God. And people hated him from, from the get-go. They just didn't want to have anything to do with him and stuff. But, uh, but again, you know, we're going through these tribulations. We're going through these hard times, and we don't know what to do. You know, we're just, you know, there's been many nights I've just laid there in bed and said, Lord, help me. Good night. I love you. And because I just didn't know. But the comfort of it is Romans 8, 26. I mean, uh, uh, chapter 8, Romans 8, and then 26 through, um, through, tw uh, through 28, and it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh his intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And when he does that, that's how we can, on verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good that, to them that love the God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Because the Lord, we, we don't even, 
Well, I can tell you, I don't know what I'm doing half the time, and not even half the time, all the time. You know, uh, Brenda and I have talked a lot, and we're, we've just been amazed in, in our walk as a married couple walking to serve the Lord. We don't know what we're doing, and and he just he just ta he just takes it, and he, uh, you know, he he does that. He the Spirit prays for us, and then gives us, uh, you know, prays for intercession, and then gives us wisdom as far as what we're supposed to do. So that's such a comfort in knowing that, you know, through all this that we're going to have to go through in this life, that we're not alone, that the Lord's there with us, ever, ever with us. Uh, turn to Luke chapter uh, 22, and here's an example of the Lord praying. And it's uh, Luke 22. It's very familiar. It's, uh, it's about Peter. It's uh, verse 31. And, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, and he, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Now, I've always stopped there, you know, and, and just never really. If I, I know I read through the rest of it, but I never really saw it until, uh, again, the Lord opened my eye to it. But it says... Uh, uh, fell not, and he says, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. He didn't say if thou art converted. He says when thou art converted. So, you know, uh, when the Lord prays, it's going to be effectual, you know, and it's going to it's going to be powerful. And it's and it's. Uh, so I thank God that He does pray for us, you know. And um, um, uh, let's see. So then uh, we also, you know, with these, when we do um, go through these trials and stuff like that, you know, we are to be able to comfort one another. In 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, Starting verse 3, it says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer or whether we be comforted it is for your consolation and salvation and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering so shall ye also be of the consolation so when we do go through those hard times Inevitably, there's going to be a time where someone's going to go through something very similar to that and it and God's mercy that he gave to us, he gives us that compassion to be able to help that other, that person that's going through that at the time. So it is very much needful that we go through those, those things, just like Christ went through his suffering, that we might learn suffering ourselves. And so that, again, we cannot glory in anything but him. You know, we cannot, the flesh will not glory in anything but him. Uh, the, the last scripture here is uh, in James uh, chapter 5, very familiar uh, scripture. And again, I thank God that he takes the scriptures and he will bring forth his message at the time that we need to do it. And again, all the scriptures are, can, can and are used um, in multiple areas, it, there, the vastness of the scriptures, I don't, we'll never exhaust that. I mean, we've talked about that many times. And it's one book, uh, when I read a book once and I'll say, well, I think I'll start reading that again. I start reading it and I go, well, I know how this is going. And then it, I, get, I get bored and I put it down. The Bible's not that way. It's ever fresh. It's a daily fresh bread and stuff. Uh, and so... I thank the Lord that I thank the Lord that He allowed me to know how to read that I can read the scriptures. So, but uh, James five sixteen says, "Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed." 
but the, the part uh, the want to emphasize on it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and like I said I appreciate you brothers and sisters that pray for me because it was effectual but when I thought about this the Lord again bringing everything back to him who is more righteous than Christ so if Christ the, the ultimate righteous person prayeth for us it's going to avail Amen. Much and that's why it's not if things are going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. So, thank you, Lord Jesus, for praying for us.